Hi, today we want to talk about learning new things. I'm Alec Delancey, psychologist. So, in school, you might be learning new subjects each term or each semester. And even within those terms or those semesters, the subjects, they will be broken up into different parts. So you'll be learning different items as you go along. Hopefully it is done in such a way where it is structured and you're building upon knowledge. So in the workplace, you might also be learning new things. Maybe you got a new job and in that new job, it requires some skills in addition to what probably you may have done before. So you may have come into this new organization and the, the skill that you bring into the organization is good and that's why they hire you. But it may require some different skills or some new ways of doing specific things. So learning needs to take place. So there are different kinds of techniques and strategies that a person could learn either in school or in the workplace to get a handle on what is required. Some key areas that I want to talk about today has to do with different kinds of modes that are required for learning to take place. So for example, you may be needing to learn something that you may not have actually thought about before and now engaging that particular subject, it's a little difficult, it's challenging, it's trying. So the mode that you may have to adapt has to be a focus mode. So this is something new, you have to focus on it. And granted, focus especially in these days where there are so many distractions or noise that competing for our attention. Focus can be difficult, but in order to learn something new, we have to develop this kind of focus mode. Now, some researchers, that's what they call it, focus mode. What does that entail? Well, it, re it entails uh, reflecting on the problem and truly trying to figure it out. So the problem might be that subject, that new subject matter, or that part of the subject matter that you are exposed to. So you're trying to figure it out, or it may be that you are in the workplace, it's the first time you are, are treating or handling a, a specific task, maybe it's an administrative task, or probably it has to do something with uh, organizing or strategizing to get a project done, so it's new. Uh, of course, you will seek advice from other individuals so that you can get sufficient information to know exactly what to do. Uh, but it's new to you. It requires a level of focus, a level of attention. So that's the focus mode. But of course, that takes energy. So there can be a point where we feel extremely stressed or tired or our head hurts or we just get a little frustrated. So that could happen. If that happens, then it's not always a bad thing because it says that energy is being put forward or put forth in order to learn something new but focus mode that's not the only way that we can actually learn something or the only way that we could actually get a handle on bettering ourselves at a, at a specific task or at a specific skill it requires something that sometimes we don't always think about and that has to do with what some researchers call a diffuse mode so this is the mode or the mindset of relaxation. So this is the part that requires us to now sit back or lie down and think deeply about practically nothing that has to do with a thing that we're trying to solve. So we are relaxed. We take a break. We do something completely different. Now, the brain is interesting in that what happens is that the brain now, although we are relaxed, tries to still make sense of what's going on. But it is less stress because we are in a different kind of operation where the mood is concerned. 
we are more relaxed, we less stress, and that too is necessary in order to help us to become uh, better at solving a problem. You may have heard some person say, you know what, I, I get the answer when I was actually taking a walk. So they will not focus or hyper focus on the specific task, but they were just taking a walk and the answer came to them. Or you may hear some person say I'm in the shower or in the bathroom or what have you. And why just, I wasn't even thinking about the specific thing, you know, it just came to me and that was it. It came and I was able to get the answer, or at least part of the answer, or at least I was seeing how to approach the problem in a different way, a different light. So those are some possibilities, those things can happen. So it requires two kinds of modes. One, the focus mode, and two, it requires us to have this kind of diffuse or this relaxed way of thinking. Of course, it goes without saying, and I made mention of it before, in this world, there's a lot of distractions vying for our attention. And sometimes what could happen is that we jump from the focus mode into being on our cell phones or on our tablet or something of that sort. And we say, well, we are in the diffuse mode because we are relaxing. But oftentimes, that's not necessarily the case. What happens is that we may be scrolling, sometimes aimlessly, just scrolling on a specific social media. And that too now is creating a kind of focus mode. Now, not necessarily focus with the intent of writing a research paper after we finish scrolling or being able to do a presentation or anything like that, but it requires a kind of focus on a specific content very quickly, probably less than five seconds, and then we scroll to something else. But that is creating a kind of focus, short as it may be. That can take us, those five seconds or so just scrolling, could carry us to five hours before we actually know it. Now, some persons may say, is that not different to what some researchers call flow, where you enter into this flow state or this state where you can work on a particular problem without actually feeling that you're working. So, you become so focused that time doesn't seem to, to matter anymore. Well, I guess that could be an argument that that is a flow state, uh, but you probably might want to compare when a person is experiencing a flow state on something that might be considered productive as opposed to flow state, if that is flow state, when a person is aimlessly scrolling. So the results definitely will be different. So what we want to do when we enter this diffuse mode after a session of probably focusing is really to relax. Now this relax is not switching on the television or the tablet or so forth. Um, but this is just sitting back, taking some deep breaths, maybe just going for a walk. So this is not something that requires any kind of extreme focus taking a walk we should be able to take a walk without having to focus too much on that or just lying down and relaxing relax relaxing without having to focus too much on that now generally we should be able to to do that now a technique that can help us with this focus and this diffuse mood is the pomodoro technique now i will have spoken about the pomodoro technique a few times on this channel and it basically for some persons who are starting off uh, they may do some focus work for about 25 minutes and then they take a five minute break in the five minute break they sit back they probably drink some water they don't go on social media or start to aimlessly scroll or go on any kind of watch tv or something like that they don't do that for the five minutes you simply sit or stand or just take a walk and take a little stretch that doesn't require much focus. But that is integral in the learning process because with focus mode and diffuse mode, it gives our brain the opportunity to 
zero in on something and then take a break so that we can make sense of some of the things, not all, but some of the things that we were just focusing on. You can probably look at diffuse mode as sleeping. Now it's not the same, so don't get it mixed up. But when we sleep, we take an opportunity to sit back, close our eyes, and uh, sleep. In sleep, sometimes what happens is that we start to make sense or move things around that we will have treated with during the day or over the course of the days or months as the case may be or a problem that we are working on. Now, we don't feel it necessarily. We are operating on a different brainwave and uh, different consciousness. So, we are making sense of some things and putting them in, in, in their own filing system, as it were. Now, how do we know that? Well, when we don't get adequate or sufficient sleep, we tend to be more stressed, more anxious, irritable, and we tend to forget a lot. Uh, things seem to be a little hazy or fuzzy. So we know, just looking at it on that level, that sleep is integral to help us to make sense of things, to, to create neural pathways in our brains that can help us to remember, right? You do something again and again, more neural pathways are created in the brain and we're able to, to remember. It helps us with memory. And of course, once we sleep and we rest, we are less likely to experience high levels of stress. And uh, as a result, the neurotransmitters that may be triggered to help us fight or flight are not necessarily always being flooded in our system because we are rest, we are sleeping, and therefore it doesn't affect nervous system growth so that memory could, could take place. So it is important for us to focus, focus mode on a subject matter, maybe you're preparing for exams and you have to focus on something, but you also need to go through the diffuse mode. And the diffuse mode has to do with taking a break, and the Pomodoro technique seems to work really good with working for probably 25 minutes. Now, if it is that you're able to increase your concentration, it means that you might be able to actually work for more than 45 minutes. I know some, sorry, more than 25 minutes. I know some persons who can work for about 45 minutes or more. And with the 45 minutes, they take maybe a 10 minute break. So they probably take a little longer break. So, and if that is working for you and you can go to 50 minutes, of course, you do that as well. You won't want to use the Pomodoro technique for an entire 10 hours, obviously. Take a 45 minute break, take a 10 minute break, and you do that for about 10 hours. Um, and that could be a little stressful on your body. Plus, there's a diminish, it appears, when we try to study for long periods of times over a course of 10 hours or 15 hours a day uh, that tend to not be a, be advantageous of course there are some situations where you may do that um, maybe you, you're cramming for something maybe you recognize that you have some deficit in a particular area and you want to cram for it because the exam might be maybe the following day or the next three days or something like that and you put in probably two or three uh, eight hour days of focus, rest, focus, rest, focus, rest, you know, that kind of 25 minutes, five minutes break. And you do that for probably eight hours each day for the next three days. Probably you're going through some exams and you do that. But that is not something you want to do consistently. It could stress your body. Your mental health could be affected. It can also affect your physical health. So you want to pace yourself. You know, you have an exam coming up in the next three weeks you want to space out your study right study periods you want to do it frequent but you want to space it out maybe every other day or so for about three hours or less depending on if you recognize this is something you know and you're just going it over maybe you have your cue cards and you're just going through your cue cards you probably can do that um, a bunch of cue cards, you can get through that in probably an hour or two hours, right? 
or maybe you have your spider diagrams and you're just going through each page with your diagrams on it that pertains to a particular question so you can do that all right so i think that diffuse and focus mode it's something that you can can really consider when studying or when learning something new it's a, it is important to focus but it also is important to take some breaks so that you can make sense of what you were focusing on so again it was a pleasure having this discussion with you uh, like subscribe and you can put any comment in the comment section and i'll be happy to respond to you so until then take care